Welcome back, family, to another video. Praises to the Most High Yah. Praises to His Holy Name. Giving honor to the Holy Spirit, which is the Ruach. And unto um, our upcoming Messiah. Acknowledgement. So, family, I'm coming back with another video. And this is, as you see, 10 Reasons Jesus Died. I'm sorry, 10 reasons Jesus came to die. So let's just look at uh, the 10 reasons here. It says to destroy hostility between races. Okay. So um, far as one's being prejudiced. Um, and it says here the suspicion, prejudice, and demeaning attitudes between the Jews and the non-Jews. In the Bible, times were as a serious as the radical, ethnic, and national hostilities today. Jesus died to create a whole new way for races to be reconciled. He has broken down the dividing wall. Okay. And it says this is through him dying on the cross. So, what we know in this day and time is that over 2,000 years ago, um, this person is saying this is why he believes that um, Jesus died, one of the reasons. And as we can tell this day, racism is, have went to higher levels. Okay, so let's continue. It says to give marriage its deepest meaning. So, you know, of course, with one, you know, believing and trusting in the Almighty and, you know, of course, um, doing it in the way, in a manner as is written in the Bible. But, you know, what it, this person is saying here as well, it says that that's why the Bible says husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And uh, God's design for marriage is for a husband to love his wife the way Christ loves his people. And for the wives to respond the way Christ's people should. This kind of love is possible because Christ died for both the husband and wife. Let's continue. To absorb the wrath of God. The seriousness of an insult rises with the dignity of the one insulted. Okay. So it says here, since our sin is against the rule of the universe, the wages of sin is death. Not to punish it would be unjust. So God sent his own son, Jesus, to divert sin, <clears throat> sin's punishment from us to himself. Okay. Also says here that then God publicly endorsed Christ's accomplishment by raising him from the dead, providing the success of his suffering and death. So through him dying, that will take the wrath away from us. And we know that not to be true. But they say, well, if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you can accept, but still yet, you don't have to keep the laws, but still yet, just repent and just make sure you repent before he comes back because he died, but you still can sin. Let's continue. So what we, I'm sorry, so that we would escape the curse of the law. Hmm. There was no escape from the curse of God's law. It was just. We were guilty. There was only one way to be free. So someone must pay the penalty. So Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Okay. 
Also, it says here, a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So, you know, as, uh, you know, waking up to this truth, the law is still in effect. Um, it's been. And even in the scriptures, it says, according to Jesus Christ, he didn't come to change anything. But still yet, again, family, it just, you know, far as contradicts what the Most High says from the Old Testament. Let's continue. Okay, to reconcile us to God. Okay, so he took the steps we could not take to remove his own judgment by sending Jesus to suffer in our place. So, you know, this all sounds great and wonderful. But, you know, we know um, at this point as Israelites that in, in even in doing, in, in reading this and trying to absorb and take it in, um, judgment is coming to this whole earth and to all, you know, people have done his people wrong according to the nation, wherever we were scattered and to the individual who ever, when it goes up that person lineage. So again, let's move for it to show God's love for sinners. The measures of God's love is shown by the degree of his sacrifice in saving us from the penalty of our sins. He gave his only son, Okay, and through that, of course, they're saying being crucified, that Christ endured. And it becomes clear that the sacrifice the Father and the Son made to save us was indescribably great. Well, as you read this and, you know, understand this as an Israelite in this day and time, um, one man can die for another. According to the Bible, no one can die for another. I know there come times when, you know, um, your far as uh, ones that, you know, have to have sin and um, are they there? Uh, well, when you think of even Isaiah 14 and 21, that they will pay for the sins of their father. That's different. But for one to take away the atonement, atonement for you um, as a man to a woman or a woman to a man, no. So let's continue. So it says here, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Our debt is so great, only a divine sacrifice could pay it. But, you know, even with us living in the moment and believing this over the years before we became in this uh, mode of awakening, um, it never dawned, maybe not you, never thought of it, but I, you know, thinking about it back now, we still can sin though. We still can sin and it, it, it's, it's, it's like, you just really waiting for that cloud to open. And if someone yell and say, oh, here he come, you will have time to repent. So when you think back and when I think back about this now, it's like, wow. Let's continue to show Jesus owns love for us. The death of Christ is also a supreme expression that he loved me and gave himself for me. It is my sin that cuts me off from God. All I can do is plead for my mercy, for mercy. I see Christ suffering and dying to give his life as a ransom. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Believe in him. Jesus paid the price, the highest price possible to give me uh, personally the greatest gift possible. Let's continue. Three, to take away our condemnation. Okay. 
The greatest conclusion to the suffering and death of Christ is this. Therefore, no condemnation, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. To be in Christ means to be in the relationship to him by faith. Christ becomes our punishment, which we don't have to bear. So you have so many people walking around. When you really read the Bible, understand it. Father is going to bring wrath upon this earth. He's going to judge people on this earth. And a lot of people, I them, you know, saying, I repent. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. You know, it's, it's wiped clean. And you still can do how you want to, when you want to. Let's continue. To bring us to God. Gospel means good news. And it's all, I'm sorry, and it all ends in one thing, God himself. The gospel is the good news that costs of his son's life. God has done everything necessary to captivate us with what will make us eternally and ever increasingly happy, namely himself. Christ suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. Number one, to give eternal life to all who believe on him. Jesus made it plain that rejecting the eternal life he offered would result in the misery of eternity in hell. So often in Christianity, they gave some parts of matters that are true. Because as an Israelite waking up to this truth, understanding that um, there is a true lake of fire. And, but, you know, being that the commandments were given to the Israelites and where sin comes, it's by you transgressing against the law. So all this time when we were or have been a part of Christianity, we were taught or told the laws didn't matter. Keeping those different, you know, 1613, which in some um, instance, of course, some doesn't apply. Some are Levitical, you know, priesthood, but still yet we were told that the laws were done away with and that's the way it mainly have been taught. But now, you know, of course, we know different. So they tell us, you know, about either you're going to die and go to heaven or die and go to hell. But they didn't tell us all the other stuff that in between that making up to who those commandments were set towards and how others, you know, would um, actually cleave onto the Israelites and how the Almighty you know, reigning over the Israelites in the sense of, um, as in Zechariah 14 tells us that in that day and in that time, that that's when the Lord, you know, our King will rule over the whole earth. And that will be what you will call, uh, most people call a one world order, which a lot of people calls it a new world order, but it's really a one world order, right? So these are 10 reasons why they saying Jesus died for us. And a lot of it now I see right through it. I see a lot of um, just the dignity that was created and how much, you know, time has been spent, how much money people have made off of all of this to be able to write a book just because. And not really getting a full understanding of the Bible in itself because the Bible hasn't opened up to you. You don't know who the people are. You don't know what these, you know, different um, words and what they mean when it comes to um, names and who is affiliated with, you know, none of that. So I have also another strip. I mean, another uh, thing I would like to share. Let's see. So we covered 
10 reasons Jesus came. Let's go to 10. I'm, I'm sorry, why did Jesus die for me? Okay. Okay, let's continue, family. So, um, okay, so why did Jesus die for me? Why did Jesus choose to suffer? Did Jesus have to die? Wasn't there another way to redeem human, humankind? God sent his beloved son to, to earth to be our Lord and Savior. And Jesus willingly volunteered. He knew his own suffering was necessary and that only a perfect being could satisfy justice for all and round doing. I'm sorry, all the round doing in the world. Jesus died for you because he loved you. Uh, he died because it is part of God's plan. He died so all people who repent and obey his commandment and ordinance can have eternal life. Jesus made it possible for all people to be cleansed from sin. God's plan allowed his children to learn and grow doing mortality. He allows us to choose our own action and God knows we will sin. That prevent us from returning to his presence in heaven because no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. If you are to live with God again, you, your sins have to be removed. This is only possible through Jesus because he was born of God and of Mary. Jesus was both divine and human. He was able to live a perfect life. He chose to take responsibility for the sins of all people in exchange for faith, sincere repentance and obedience to God's commandment. God gave Jesus the power, the redemption, and through his suffering, Jesus was able to pay the debt of sin so every person who repents can be forgiven and cleansed. Okay. So family, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm just going to do the little heading here. Jesus set up the way for all of us to regain our bodies. Okay. Jesus' death and resurrection makes it possible for all to live again. All right. So I want to, you know, read over some scriptures about, um, you know, what this, um, when it comes to Father sharing his throne and his glory. And, and just in general, um, when you really look at this, I mean, you know, when you understand what this is all about, the deity that they set up, um, and even, you know, our people, just the Israelites are who's still looking in this manner in so many ways, um, they just change out the picture. And they're like, well, he was before all the way back there in 70 AD. He was, you know, that was, he was black. So we're going to make him back. We're going to make him back black, right? And just keep everything with it because what is written. So let me check this out one moment, family. Okay. So Deuteronomy um, 4, and which is 4 and 35, it says, Know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. First Kings 8 and 60. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord God, the Lord is God, and that there is none else. First Chronicle 17 and 20. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee. Isaiah 45 and 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. Joel 2 and 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God and none else. Okay. So one moment. 
Isaiah 45 and 22, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else. Mark 12 and 32, and the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou has said the truth for there is one God and there is none but he. Okay, Isaiah 45 and 21, tell ye and bring them there. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared his this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord and there is no God else besides me? A good God and a savior, I'm sorry, a just God and a savior, there is none besides me. Okay. So, of course, family, like I said, let's go to Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. And even when, you know, Father said, who can, who's equal to me? You know? Jeremiah 10 and 11, thus you are, I'm sorry, thus you are to tell them these gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from earth and from under the heavens. So Father's telling Jeremiah, said, tell them, tell our people who worshiping these little small G gods, you know, who did not make the heavens and the earth, you know, so it just, you know, so much where you see how the split came. They made a part of the Bible old and it, that just resonate with people. Oh, it's old. It's old news. And then they, you know, put a surrounding around um, changing up the mosaic, <clears throat> mosaic. I mean, no, I'm sorry, um, the mosaic uh, laws and, and put that. You know, uh, that's done away with. So Jesus Christ has a new covenant with us, right? And when he's naming out all uh, what we should actually do according to the the commandments, okay? And um, let me go to one other place here. One moment, family. Like, you know, you like what Father saying. Um, so Deuteronomy 4 and 16, it says here, um, lest ye corrupt yourself and make you a graven image in simplitude for any figure, the likeness of a male or a female, Isaiah 40 and 18, to whom then will ye liken God or what likeness will ye compare unto him? Isaiah 40 and 25, to whom then will ye liken me or shall I be equal? Say, saith the Holy One. Isaiah 46 and 5, to whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? So if I was like, who are you going to make? Who's equal to me? Who's equal? So, in all this to say, family, as you know, the pointing of this matter is moving in one direction. You know, the mass of our people still in idolatry. The mass of all the information that I've shared within this last five days the mass of our people, the mass of, of our people is still in idolatry. And they feel that they are so on point. Is it that they will need to get to a place? But is that place in seeking the most high? I've been on many platforms and I've seen that in so many ways, they're more so taken up, not say only space, but time. 
but we should go back. We should have never left from seeking his face. And this could be the different levels right now where father had us to wake up, had us to study and read to show ourselves, you know, approve and being able, we'll be able to decipher. But in seeking him and building that relationship with him, we will know that with the New Testament and so much of that, of the gospels, that is a lot of holes in it. But if we're not seeking his face, if we feel like we have arrived because we have learned the scriptures, we can break it down, we can debate, we can do all of this, but we still not building that relationship. Then we're going to miss it. So I just wanted to come back on because this surface and I just wanted to share in all um, due respect to all mankind that I love my brothers and sisters and I seek the most high and in my fast and in my prayer that he will, you know, show me and guide me and that he also will wake up my Hebrew brothers and sisters. I love the whole idea, even when we first start waking up and a lot of people was, you know, sharing this and sharing that about, you know, the awakening and they're still doing it to whatever degree. But a lot of our people have got relaxed because they're waiting on something to happen. They're waiting for Jesus Christ to come back, whether they change the name or the face out. It doesn't matter. They're waiting. But wouldn't it be something that Father is waiting on us? Because we don't have all the books to tell us that, oh, this is what y'all need to do. But still yet, we should want to seek him anyway. We should want to build a relationship with him. We should want to understand what is this is all about. So I'm just putting forth, some of you might not be here yet. Some of you may not, you know, think that this is okay because you want to believe, of course, what you want to believe in when you can. I'm just putting this out forth as I feel led to. But I, I'll never forget someone reached out to me two years ago and I was just coming into the truth to, to the awakening. And she said, um, do you really understand fully or surrounding of Jesus Christ? She was telling me about, you know, there are other, um, you know, ones that has the same storyline about being birthed to a virgin, Mary, but the names are different. And I was like, well, how you didn't know they didn't copy from, um, you know, the Bible. So she left me alone. Right. But I was stern and I was just, you know, waking up, you know. But I didn't have no no biblical knowledge in me, right? So I'm pretty sure she's seeing, you know, it now. Like, okay, she's getting it. She's understanding that it's more to it. So that's what I'm saying to each one of you. Go deeper. Don't go by what I say. Do your own research. Seek the most high, mainly, first of all. Let him guide and lead you to truth. You don't have to come back on my video another time. Accordingly, you can delete yourself if you want. You understand? I'm not going to hold you hostage because what is really going to make a big difference in this all as this unfold is pride. If there anything that the most high say, I let you go out on a limb or whatever and hey, wheel me back in or whatnot and, 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 and whatnot. However, I'm wrong. I'm going to come back on and I'm going to say, family, I had it all wrong. I, I, I was able to see something that now I understand. But there's so many, so, so much of our people who are got so many followers. I don't care if I had a million followers either. I just want to put that out there. But so many of our people got so many followers and you imagine them coming into information and understanding once they, you know, seeking and they come to a place, they have to come back on and talk to their, their people. And if they're doing it from their heart, from the wrong place, for money, for greed, for popularity, fame, you imagine how hard that's going to be to humble down and 
not say that they really took them in the wrong direction is that they were, you know, well, you can say however you want to say, but, you know, they, they weren't seeking or, you know, they were looking at it from another angle. Hey, a lot of people may hold to they, to what they want to believe in because of many factors. And that's going to be sad. And I pray not. I see it clearly more so within this uh, last five days than I have before. So, again, I'm not twisting your arms. I'm not trying to make you believe what I'm believing. I'm just trying to lay it out. And you make your decisions. But you mainly need to seek the most high. And have them to lead you where he wants you to go. Because the truth is, he can lead you to somebody once or twice and then he leads you someplace else and then you never go back to that person. Please know this. When people start camping out or, you know, just following one or joining this group or doing that, you you want to be, you want the most high to lead you. See, I've been by myself for the last basically two years. Father didn't lead me to go to anyone's church, no one's assembly, uh, no group in that, in that regards to, in that lineup. It's always me in my room, my house. I've been in, you know, here for two years just before him, reading the word, praying and, you know, and fasting. And I'm not saying fasting every single day, but my routine of praying, you know, and, and seeking his face and, and just talking to him, asking him questions. That, that's been what I've been doing. All the businesses that I've had, the magazines, you know, the red carpet events, you know, the reality shows, you know, all this stuff, it, uh, you know, all of that, I've, I push all of that aside. All I'm doing is, is before the most high every single, for, for two years, going on three years now, before the most high. That's all my day is. I wake up to him in the middle of the day to him and go to bed to him. You understand? That's all I'm doing. He have not led me to ask nobody for money or do this or do that. Um, nothing. I think right now I probably have about 11 cents in my purse. That's all. And I'm just as happy because my faith is in him, but it took me a while to get here. You understand? And about how much money you got in your bank account. So I say anybody out there on the forefront, the most I make do for you, he'll make a way for you. He makes sure that my mortgage, you know, that is taken care of. Other things are taken care of. And no money coming out of my bank account. One of my bank account has 68 cents in it. And another one has $5 in savings. That's it. And that has been for the last almost going on three years. And here, there now, you know, there's one, someone will bless me, a family member or whatever, you know. Um, and then, you know, I will have this for that. But no. Not about none of, you know, that not about the clicks. Having one person is just important to having 200 people. And it's not for me to say, oh, I want, you know, more people to come on. What I want to do is share whatever the most high gives me, you know. So that's all I have, family. Blessings to each one of you. Pray your day, um, you know, um, go well for you. Um, praise to the most high, Yah, honor and glory to his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for all things. Bless its family. Shalom.